Hey, what's up, guys? So um, by the time you're watching this, I'm guessing it was actually a couple of weeks um, ago. I had a uh, blog post talking about um, how to set up one of these like greatest teams of all time leagues and which um, uh, team to choose, which is a really interesting subject. So we talked, uh, I think it was just the other day, about um, the famous uh, baseball Think Factory uh, project that uh, didn't go so well thanks to um, Jim Dick and to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, to... Uh, Jim Ginsburg and uh, what's his name, Dick. Maybe they were both named Jim. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, now, there's a lot of cool stuff you can find if you kind of know where to look on the Internet Archive. It used to be on Baseball Think Factory, but then people made dumb decisions and took away old uh, uh, posts that were interesting. Um, uh, there's a bunch of interesting stuff you can find in the Internet Archive about sort of the discussion behind this and which teams to include and which ones not to include. And this is actually a really interesting question, right? I want to look today very quickly at two of the um, uh, main methods that people use um, to uh, determine which uh, team should belong in this type of league. And then we're going to talk really briefly afterwards about whether it makes sense or not. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look here. Um, first of all, there is a uh, chart that I have. There we go. Um, this chart originally comes from Baseball Almanac. And of course, um, I have forgotten here to make this bigger. We'll make the text big for you. There you go. Now you can see what we're talking about. Um, this chart comes from Baseball Almanac, and this is a list of uh, all teams in Major League Baseball history organized not by winning percentage, but by number of games won. There's a reason why we prefer to look at number of games won, and the reason is obvious, because if you don't play a long season, you get teams that have crazy good winning percentages that may or may not really belong. Um, I think, yes, it's every team in Major League Baseball history. And so you'll see these are the teams that you usually think of when you think of the greatest teams of all time. 1906 Cubs, 2001 Mariners, the 98 Yankees, 54 Indians, and on and on and on and on and on. Here's the 27 Yankees on this list. Both the 69 Orioles and the 70 Orioles make it. 75 Reds make it. The 86 Mets, right? These are the teams that we normally will think about. Now, I don't know if there's a whole bunch of people who think of, like, the 2021 Giants. Um, I don't think about the 2021 Giants when it comes to anything because I didn't really pay much attention to baseball in 2021, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, on and on we go down this list. You can go check out the uh, blog post. It will give you all of this information. Now, if you wonder why we usually don't use one loss percentage, again, this is the reason why. As you can see here, you get some teams that um, are familiar, 06 Cubs, the 02 Pirates. You'll notice that um, those other big teams like the 01 Mariners are a little bit further down on the list. Why? Because they played more games, right? The 06 Cubs might be more impressive because they lost fewer games, I suppose. Um, it, it sort of depends upon like how you feel about this, really. Um, the uh, O2 Pirates have their own problems, and we'll talk about them in a little bit more detail later on. There are reasons why the O2 Pirates probably should not be considered one of the greatest teams of all time, and it has nothing to do with like the team itself having a problem. Um, and then you start running into like the 1886 Chicago White Stockings. Now, I don't know much about baseball in the 1880s, other than that it was definitely an organized sport that is um, definitely underrated. Um, but it's really a little disconcerting to me to consider that um, the Chicago White Stockings and the Detroit Wolverines are both on this list coming from the same season. That's a little bit concerning. This is where I say it's probably the number of games played and then something else was going on in the league. 1897, Boston is a team that does come up from time to time, as do the um, uh, Orioles teams from the uh, mid-1890s as well. That's a team that you could um, excuse. But yeah, the other one, 1887 St. Louis Browns. I mean, you'd really have to be kind of a baseball geek to even know about this team. I have read some stories about them, but uh, these two teams I, I'm not so sure about. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why you try to stay away from just winning percentage. Now, I'm going to tell you something else that really surprised me as I put this together. There's not a lot of good sources for this information. Like, if you go into baseball reference, you can't simply take every single single team, um, a single team season in history and organize them by winning percentage or whatever. You can't do something that's as simple as that, which is kind of concerning because, um, you know, there used to be books that would be published that would have this information, and yet in the Internet era, it's hard to find. It's good because nobody's writing about it. For whatever reason, nobody seems to care. There are other issues that you get here that uh, we'll get into in a second. The second measure that we have, of course, is the domination index um, or the dynasties. Now, if you uh, have read the articles, seen the other videos and stuff, you know this comes from the book Dynasties by um, uh, Rob Nyer and um, uh, Epstein, um, Eddie Epstein, I think it was. Um, and uh, yeah, Eddie Epstein, I have it right here. 
And uh, when we look at their methodology and look at the best teams of all time, we come up with a list that's somewhat similar but a little bit different, right? This surprised me. If you look at the National League, the uh, 2022 Dodgers wind up as uh, the most dominant team of all time. Now, I haven't put in the 2023 statistics yet, so maybe that'll change. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, There's some other teams that will surprise you, like the 1917 Giants wind up up there. Like I said, the 02 Pirates, we'll talk about them. I'm not too surprised that they're here. Two other recent Dodgers teams, 2020 and 2021, are also up on this list very high, as are the 2019 Dodgers. And this is interesting because this is kind of an argument against this method. One of the reasons why this dynasty method seemed to work so well is because before 2000, at least, um, this chart used to be a good collection of teams that um, we would expect to see, and you didn't have a lot of teams repeated. Yeah, look, here's the 1895 Baltimore Orioles, right? Used to be that, um, you know, you would get a pretty good mix and you would get some teams that were special like the 98 Astros. But then along come the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers with one, two, three, four seasons in a row in which they're at the very top of this chart. And so the question can be asked, uh, is there the Los Angeles Dodgers from these years really one of the greatest dynasties in the history of the sport? I mean, with 19, 20, 21, and 22, this would qualify as the greatest four-year dynasty in the history of, of baseball, unquestionably. And again, this is before we put in the 2023 information, which I suspect is also very good for them. Something else is going on here, I suspect. I do not think that we have just witnessed the greatest like five-year run in baseball history. I really, really doubt that that's the case. Um, now we look at the American League. In the American League, you don't see quite as many intrusions from uh, modern teams, although you do see the 2022 Yankees up there, of all teams, in a real kind of odd space. I bet uh, those who watch the 2023 Yankees have some questions about that. Um, I mean, you're talking like the 98 Yankees, 84 Tigers, the 27 Yankees, the 39 Yankees, the 95 Indians. I mean, all of these are teams that you'd expect. We talked before about the uh, 2015 Blue Jays, um, who have one of the greatest offensive teams of all time, apparently. I'm hoping that my statistics are correct. I mean, whenever I look at that, I think I got to go back and recheck. I think I've rechecked before. There's other teams that surprise you, like the 2017 Indians, a team I don't remember anything about. But you can see this list is not quite as dominated by those teams. Now, there's a couple of problems with these lists, and there are a couple of other things that we want to uh, talk about here. A um, couple of points I want to make when we're talking about like the greatest teams and doing a project. Point number one is you don't want to have the same team show up over and over again. What I mean by that is both the 75 and 76 Reds were good. You're going to be really bored with your project if you have those two teams playing against each other. Like I, I guess you could do it, right? But you're going to get tired of it really soon. This is why it's always concerning when you have, say, greatest team uh, seasons that come out and it has like the 37 Yankees and the 38 Yankees and the 39 Yankees, right? Because you look at that and you're like, well, what am I going to do with this? I was hoping to get some of these teams I hadn't heard about or didn't know so much about. Like, how come I don't have the 1895 Orioles, but I do have all of these Yankees teams that are very similar to each other, right? What's the deal with that? Um, That's one thing to think about if you're going to set this up, right? A couple other things that uh, you really should keep into consideration that I think went wrong in that Diamond Mine project we were talking about before. Um, One of the big ones, and this comes up every time we talk about this, is that the championship does matter, right? We have this tendency in the world of baseball commentary to act like the regular season is everything and the postseason doesn't mean anything, which is insane. I mean, the players will tell you if you talk with them that the postseason is harder than the regular season, not easier. They're not a bunch of meaningless exhibition games. People who treat it that way are very, very strange, and they don't make any sense to me. So I mean, I'll just tell you that my opinion on this will not be a secret. I think that the postseason matters a lot. Now, I don't think that that means that we're going to kick out the 06 Cubs or the 2001 Mariners for their postseason failures, but I do think that when you're coming up with teams to include, you need to look at it kind of like you're making a hiring decision at work, right? and they have a resume and you're like, well, you got this, but you don't have that, right? And then, well, this is a good positive point. And you got to find, figure out a way to weigh one thing against each other. Almost like we need some form of war for this. But if you come up with a formula for this, I'm going to not be very happy with you because we have enough formulas. Um, number two is that, or number two, number three here, is that the level of difficulty that the team faced actually matters. This is one thing that people always overlook. Look, there there was, if you go back to the old baseball Think Factory threads, there was a person who talked about, I mentioned this in the uh, video the other day, that uh, the 54 Indians um, beat up on the really lousy teams. I mean, they lost like a total of like, I don't know, four or five games combined against the Red Sox and the Orioles, right? 
Red Sox and the Orioles in 54 were bad, and the Indians just totally pulverized them in every single game. However, the Indians were only 500 against the Yankees and the White Sox. Um, Interestingly enough, equally 500 against both teams. So, I mean, the thing is that if you're going to, I mean, that's not necessarily a knock against this team because most great teams have something similar happen. It's very rare to get a team that um, comes out and has a winning record against every other team. The 2000 Mariners had that if, if you don't count the postseason, but you probably should count the postseason, right? Um, uh, if you're going to like give an edge to one team over another, you got to look at the difficulty level, right? I would say that if you have a team that is a good team, known to be a good team, that had to overcome a very difficult opponent in the regular season, and so as a result, maybe the dynasty, uh, the domination index doesn't look so great, or maybe the one loss record isn't all the way there, say like the 85 Cardinals or like the 62 Giants or like the 1993 Braves, If you have a team like that, I would say that probably belongs on the list. I would give a nod to that team over a team that played, you know, a bunch of like fruitcake type teams in the league and ended up winning a whole bunch of games uh, like the 1902 Pirates. So there you go. Um, Another thing I want to say is that um, interleague play will screw you up. I think that's what's happening, especially in the National League. Um, I think that there's something about the Dodgers playing the Angels, for example, that might give them an advantage um, in some of these measures. Right. Um, I did write before about the um, 2022 uh, Dodgers um, potentially having a uh, unfair advantage. Um, And then the uh, last thing I want to say about this is that if you're making this sort of league, you really need to mix it up. So with that Diamond Mine League, what the guys did is they had, it's divided into two different, you know, leagues, divisions, whatever you want to, however you want to term it, right? 14 teams each. You had one that was pre-1960 and one that was 1961 and afterwards. So yeah, 1960 before, 61 and after. And they just sort of arbitrarily made this decision. I mean, which is kind of an idea, but then you run into that problem that I'm talking about where like, you know, you know that you have two teams that are close in proximity and uh, you kind of don't want to include them both, but it would be really silly if you didn't, right? Um, So, I mean, I don't know, like the 49 Dodgers and the 53 Dodgers, just to come up with a random example, right? 53 Dodgers are famous for the Boys of Summer. The 49 Dodgers had one of the greatest offenses in National League history. You kind of want to include both. If you're going to do that, you probably don't want to have all of the, you know, 1946 to 1956 teams grouped together, right? You try to spread them out. You'd want to have maybe a larger project that includes more teams, right? And um, try to have them play against each other in their own divisions that maybe always include like two dead ball era teams and uh, I don't know, like a modern era team or two and, uh, you know, have a good mix of different things, you know, so that uh, instead of having a bunch of games between using the same teams and the same players, you have a good variety of things to um, push forward with. I would say that that would make your project probably a lot more interesting. Anyway, these are just a couple of the thoughts that I have. Um, in the interest of full disclosure, like um, as much as I love playing uh, these games, um, actually uh, for me, coming up with this stuff, thinking about these rules and stuff is um, almost more fun than playing the games, honestly. Um, I spend a lot of time coming up with this stuff. I'm the sort of guy who, if you look on my computer, you'll find like text files I've made over the years with ideas for these types of leagues and how we could organize this, how we could do this, how we could do that. All right, I don't know what it is, but uh, for some reason, I really get a kick out of talking about like the greatest teams in baseball history and how we can sort of play them against each other and how we could formulate this type of a league. So if you have any thoughts, any ideas, or if you've done a project before or even like a tournament project or something, let me know down below in the comments. I'm actually really interested in this. And especially if you have like a link to something that you've done or or anything like that, I'd love to check it out. Anyway, I'll talk with you again uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.